Look at that. You see that? Not that grungy old dog. A trailer. See how it leans down on this side? It's not good, is it? This is how it should sit. Nice and straight like this one. But instead, this one's got a real lean to it. Hey there, I'm Ned Stevens. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm working on this trailer I got here. It's one of those disaster relief trailers. They, they take it down to a disaster, clean up the mess, and then when they're done with it, they bring it back and, and store it. Most of these disaster companies live out of state, like in California or something, and then they, they broker it out for power-only loads because they don't have their own trucks. So they don't always have eyeballs on stuff. And so on today, uh, we're going to fix this landing gear because that's kind of dangerous. Uneven landing gear is dangerous no matter what, I think. But if you're putting it on like a disaster relief area where you might be putting on gravel and it's fully loaded and then you got to drop it because your power only load, uh, it's even more dangerous. So we're going to go ahead and fix this up. It's actually a pretty easy process. So you can see that this does have quite a lean to it. But I, I guess it's not so bad that you would just definitely have yourself a problem but it's such an easy fix that you can save yourself any trouble that you have by just you know quickly fixing it before you drop it so let's see how much of a lean we have on this trailer measure it over here so from the ground let's say we're at 50 and three quarters and then this side just about a little bit over 50. so let's say we have at least half an inch. Look at that. It's got seashells, so you can tell it was in, it was in Florida. That's cute. It's been right there next to the beach where all that water came in from that hurricane. So essentially these landing gear are really independent. Okay, if you take out this rod right here, this has its own drive and this has its own drive. What connects them is this rod right here that keeps them in unison. So if we want to change where one is compared to where the other one is, all we have to do is take out this bolt and then it spins around freely, or we take out this bolt, whichever one's easiest. So if we can't get that to come loose, then we just try to get that one to come loose or vice versa. And if we can't get either to come loose, we've got to cut one out. Whatever one we take out, might try this one because it looks pretty wobbly anyway. We'll just replace the bolt, I think, so it can be new. So I'm getting ready to get started. I have the landing gear down because these feet right here can sometimes fluctuate up and down. This one really goes a lot. This has a lot of movement in it. So I put them on the ground and, and the trailer's being held by those landing gear. Then I'm measuring from the ground to the frame to see how far we need to make that frame go. On this one, we're about 38 inches. We need to be at 38 inches. On this one, we're about 38 and 3 eighths. So not a whole lot needs to come out, but we'll try it. So we'll see if this bolt's gonna be nice to us. It's just a 9 16 See if I can get it out of there. out. Now we're just going to turn this independently until we come down to better height. So now I just need to get that bolt hole to line back up. You can see it's a little bit off. I'll just turn a little bit. 
we close? Yeah, we're real close. Oh, careful, man. We're getting it done, Saint. All right, that looks good. And now, double check our measurements. Here's that side, the driver's side. Here's the passenger side. Just a hair over 38. So both sides are perfectly even. And for fun, let's check the front again. Now I have my truck here for safety, but the weight of the trailer is on the, that landing gear. 50 and three quarters to the ground. And about 50 and three quarters to the ground on the driver's side. Wow, that was, that turned out perfect. So let's go ahead and put this bolt in. Oh, that fits a lot better than the dirty old bolt. You want these loose, you don't want it like super tight because this will get in a bind and so it needs to be able to kind of float around, I think. Crazy on you. That can still move around. That it should be perfect. So now that wasn't so hard. Now was it? That's pretty easy. Not worth going to a shop for for sure. Um, but let's talk about some of this power only stuff. As I said earlier, this is a power only load. I just want to point out some things that if you're in the power only business, which I knew some guys that were doing power only, but they didn't do so hot so uh, hopefully you're doing better if you're doing it but if you're thinking about taking a power only flatbed load and they say oh it's all strapped down the broker's like it's just all you gotta do is hook onto it and go you should really think twice if you don't have any flatbed experience and you don't have any flatbed equipment on your truck let me show you the, this trailer and it's a, i've seen this multiple times now so if you do flatbed you probably notice right away Got a major problem right here. There's no securement. And then the securement gets a little crazy. On the outside, on the outside, <laughs> he locked it around, but he put it on the outside. And this one too. And then you got this. Well, the unit's actually pretty close to the edge. It's almost almost over right there. And you get this one hooked on the outside. And check that out. This one's coming off. So I'm not in the business of telling anyone what to do. There's even a chain sitting there. But somehow these did make it multiple states, no tickets, and uh, they didn't lose anything. And I had one trailer, they didn't even secure some stuff on the deck. So, I mean, it's just, that's the Burning Man guy. You're burning out there, burning man. I mean, you're all right, but you're a little wild, man. So think twice if you're doing power only and you're normally doing like JB hunt loads or you're doing the dry van stuff. You get into the other stuff, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble and then you end up not making any money anyway. So I have this here and I thought what I might try to do is see if I can pull this thing on there as though I was the guy who went and picked this up at midnight and I need to just make sure this is legal. So I thought it'd be interesting just with the gear you would have in a truck to be able to see without causing any damage. Can you just pull this thing 
on to its proper place. So we're gonna try that. Here. Try this. Almost. And we check the back. Yeah. And we could put a chain on the back to make sure it didn't go anywhere, but it's not moving. And we're only going little bit by little bit. Take a look at that. Now you can at least see we're coming more on top of the deck. I got uh, a little bit more to go, but of course, these are hanging off. So it would take a little more work, but I think just with a chain, a little ingenuity, you could get that thing on there straight. Now I just pull the chain over here to pull this over just a little bit. Yep. And we just give it some love jiggles. Beautiful. And I'm about good on this side. It's not actually that heavy. Just giving it a ton of force. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah. So, even if you show up at midnight, you don't have to get a forklift. You just gotta get one out there. This took me about 20 minutes. So, not bad. I could make it a little more perfect if I wanted to. But, yeah, I think we're good. So here's what we got done. Now, you can see it's pretty much on top of there. And this side is as well. So you've got a, the back side. You could do the same thing and try to get it to, to move back. Try that real quick. So on the back side, I just ran a chain, put it on the other side and winched it, and then uh, used my cheater bar to help out, pushed it in. Really not that complicated. And this is a part where you need flatbed equipment because this winch don't move anymore. This is all dented up in here. Same on this side, this winch doesn't move anymore. You can see the railings all tore up. It'd really stink to be stuck there at midnight. Now, unless you're getting a fabulous raid, I wouldn't do all that the stuff I just did for free. You'd want to charge some money. So uh, you can say to them, hey, you either 
want to have a forklift come out or I can try to straighten it out, but you're going to have to pay me for it. You're going to have to pay me some money. Get your worth. All right. Well, that was fun. I'll see you on the next one.